to the way they hate And I know better than to listen to the people who are calling us names Well, good morning, everyone. My name's Brian, and today is Tuesday, March 19th, 2024, and this is episode 657 of the Lots Project podcast, and it's titled Pushing My Buttons, and I'll be chatting about the challenges of a new attitude, new Amazon ads popping up, water from the toilet, and much, much more. But first, let's check in with the coffee crew, see who's hanging out in the live chat, chat grab a cup of coffee, and hang out for about an hour. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. How are we doing today? Uh, Pip in way early with a namaste and Jen G. These guys hang out early, early, early. We got uh, we got 307 in the morning Pip popping in uh, with first comment. Then Jen back in at uh, about 10 to 5. Like the show doesn't start till six, guys. <laughs> show doesn't start till six. But, uh, Pip watching the Bitcoin crash this morning. Uh, overnight, we crashed down all the way to 63, just below 63, bend them back up a little bit right now. We're sitting at 63,120. Sounds like a big crash to me. Sounds like a big old crash to me. And rewilder life uh, down here t- talking about getting to getting to clean six toilets today. So she'll uh, she'll get to uh, t- to hear to see about the see about the toilet water for sure. Um, let me pull up to the Noster feed over here. Make sure I have it up again. I've been slacking at that, missing. Uh, Missing a couple <laughs> comments here and there. Jen G says show starts at 4 a.m. 4 a.m. weirdo time. 4 a.m. weirdo time for sure. Uh, and Pip says he gets he, he gets bored early. Do I need to start getting up super early and start the show at like 3 Eastern? No, ain't happening. Ain't happening. Um, Rachel's foot is doing better. Perfect perfect it's uh it's been a while hasn't it rachel's foot's been hurt for quite a while if i recall and good morning canadian farmstead how we doing this morning oh guys guys it was a uh it was an interesting day yesterday for sure interesting day and it is it is winter again here in tennessee at least for one day Today, we are uh, right at the moment, we're sitting at 25 degrees outside, and it is uh, a tad cold in here. I don't know if you can see my coffee steaming. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it is uh, 25 degrees outside. Uh, was uh, right, on, right around 40 degrees in here when we got up this morning, and uh, then it's supposed to pop up again today. It's only supposed to be one, one cold overnight, but, man, it got cold. It got cold. I'll talk about uh, talk about that rolling in yesterday and um, some other things. Some other things. Um, Rewild their life says, "Don't wear shoes." I wore shoes. I also ate some sugar and grains, which totally inflamed me. Yeah, I actually talked to Corey yesterday about um, about my um, about my hunting or my my hiking boots my uh keen steel toe hiking boots that are are giving me some issues i talked about it a few weeks ago where if they're fine when i'm wearing them like they're they're fairly comfortable when i'm wearing them but if i wear them and then sit down for any length of time without taking them off and then stand back up yeah it's uh Super painful, super painful in my heels and uh, in my arches. So it is what it is at the moment. It is what it is. I got more, uh, I have more pressing things and uh, bigger priorities to take care of than, and then trying to find another pair of uh, multiple hundred dollar hiking boots. So <laughs> right now I'm just rolling with it and, uh, and try to remember to get those off as soon as I can, if it's a possibility and things like that. So, um, Rewilder's going to be able to do her 50th birthday cartwheel without pain. Is it today? Is your birthday today or later this week? Uh, Genji says 31 degrees there. Uh, I believe that's Lake Tahoe. 
uh yesterday was 67 degrees yeah we're supposed to go up um i believe we're supposed to go up to let me see i can pull it up right here you guys ever have an app that disappeared uh if you use android i don't know if it would be the same on on um on apple but uh i had an app i had a weather app that i used when i was in Minnesota, we actually had a weather station that hooked to the app on the phone, but it was uh, it was a nationwide, worldwide app. But you could um... <laughs> rewild her life says she can't remember her birthday. It's sometime next week. She can't remember because she's old. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Uh, but the the weather app, uh, you could when you bought one of these weather stations, you could make it a weather. Um, a weather station, I guess, uh, um, a registered weather station so that the, the main app would pick it up. So you could search in the app, like my, my parents in New York could, could search in the app and get our weather station that was at our farm. So I really liked the app. I got used to it. I used it all the time. And it uh, all of a sudden it disappeared from any of my home screens. It disappeared from my app list. And but when I go to the Google Play Store to download it, it says I already downloaded it and just asked me to open it. And I'm like, I don't understand. I don't understand if um, if it's there, where is the icon? And, and I can't um, can't get it to show back up. And short of deleting it and or uh, uninstalling it, which I can't figure out how to uninstall it. I don't know if I can do it through the, the app management page. Usually I have to do it through the icon. I don't know. I don't know. It's um, been one of those. To do. <laughs> so it's just been a, 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 a big old mess trying to check the weather all the time. And I haven't. Um, I haven't gone and um been frustrated enough to download a new one <laughs> i literally go to the play store every day and uh, i have the i have the search history in the play store and i just hit search and it's there and i just click it and open it that way and uh, i guess it hasn't been frustrated enough to get another one because i like the app i like the app the it's weather other uh, weather underground if you um weather underground if you ever want to check it out it's a pretty good weather app pretty uh pretty good as far as they go so anyway what is in the cup this morning i got uh i got some more hectare the light colombian and it is fantastic but um i did notice one thing this morning i was doing some stuff i uh i was running a little early and i was uh digging into some stuff on the on the laptop and I poured myself just a small, um, just a small cup. Uh, usually, I'll, I'll I'll pour just a little bit in it when it's super hot, let it cool down, and then I'll uh, I'll I'll be able to drink it because I never like my coffee super hot. <coughs> Excuse me, man, cold really does it. Uh, but I got distracted. I was uh, I was doing some stuff on the computer, and it got cold not cold but lukewarm and when i took a drink of it i was able to kind of um keep it in my mouth longer uh really taste it and it hit a different part of my my tongue i think or, or my taste buds and man it was uh it was phenomenal it had so much flavor I don't particularly like lukewarm coffee, but it was it was interesting to um, get that different taste. And then when I took the next sip, I could almost recall a little bit of that. So it was interesting. It was interesting. Rewilder Life says she added some collagen to her coffee today. That is that for uh, for bone health instead of the vitamin D and milk. Pip says he uses the same app, uh, same weather app, and uh, Pickle Pete, good morning, how we doing? He says ghost app. Yeah, I don't know. It went sideways just one day. Like, I had it. It was on my my main home screen. So, like, if I hit home, home, and it goes to the main screen um, where I have all my frequent apps, it was there, and then it wasn't. And I searched and searched and searched, and it, it's not in the app list. It was just gone. So, I don't know. Pickle P says slurp that stuff. I usually slurp the stuff um, with the with the the heat 
when it's warm, but for some reason when it was cold, it, it like hit my it hit my lip and I could tell it was cold. It was lukewarm and I I uh took a sip and I was like, oh wait. And I just let it sit there and resonate in my mouth for just a second. And I was like, oh, interesting, interesting. Um Rewilder Life says I do both, an old lady here with lots of injuries. Yeah. Uh, all right. Anyway, let's move on. What do we got going today? Uh, Daily Stoic today really leads off. Um, it was actually the Daily Stoic from yesterday. Leads off kind of um, the the pushing my buttons and uh, and what's going on there. But uh, <laughs> we <laughs> Daily Stoic yesterday. The, the the title of the day was uh, impossible without your consent so uh, what was talked about was if you've ever said my work is overwhelming or my boss is frustrating or anything down those lines um, it isn't possible your work isn't frustrating you your work you are allowing your work to frustrate you you are consenting for your work to frustrate you if your work if your boss is frustrating you if your work is overwhelming you if your dogs are driving you crazy um you have to allow that to happen to you so if you start to think about it in the other direction that, you know, all of this stuff can happen to you, but if you don't let it bother you, then it doesn't, it, it can't, it really can't unless you, um, <laughs> unless you do, uh, unless you do let it bother you. So that was kind of the, the sky high overview. And I've been thinking about it a lot. Like I, um, I get very frustrated with our boys, our dogs, and and I'll admit it probably more so than I should. Uh, Corey and I talk about it quite a bit, and I try uh, I try often to rectify that um, because she points out that they're not here very long, and especially our big guys and um, these guys aren't around as long as even other dogs, and and that's the that's kind of the the thing to keep in mind when your pets are bothering you or frustrating you is they're not here that long. So I try to keep that in mind. I try to, I try to keep in mind that they have no idea what they're doing is frustrating me. And then add on top of it, the daily stoic where it talks about, you know, unless I allow them to frustrate me, um, I, it's me. It's me. It's obviously me. Uh, Corey, Corey and I talk about it, like I said, quite often. And she says, she, she's like, you know, that every once in a while, they just drive me nuts. Um, every once in a while, they drive me nuts. And Hunter says, my dog looks, I don't know about that. My dog looks right into my eyes when annoying me. I mean, there is that. And there is that. I, uh, I'll talk a little bit about that today. Um, Jen points out, like, no one can make you do, do or feel anything. You allow the feelings or choose the action. Correct. Correct. Um, no free rent in my head is what Pip saw when he read that. Yeah. I mean, it is. So as I read that yesterday and and knowing that I, I'm trying to be less frustrated, be less angry, be less um, overwhelmed with every challenge that the dogs pose and you know you're like oh well you know you got three big dogs in the camper i get it it's frustrating well you don't even know really the start of it um at that the these dogs in particular um especially the full saint bernard's are a very challenging breed, I guess is a way to put it. Uh, between the slobber, between the hair, between the obsessive nature uh, that they naturally have, um, it just kind of all adds up. And when you when I talk about the slobber and the hair and all of that, unless you've experienced it, you have no idea. You have no idea what it's like, and it's. Um, 
an excessive amount of all of it. And it, it just, it builds all day. It builds all day. And then they've gotten into some habits, the dogs themselves and, and patterns. And it's probably a lot of our fault because we're very routine and pattern because we try to keep them on a schedule, but they've gotten into routines and patterns that, uh, that kind of irritate a little bit too. So it just adds up and adds up and adds up. So I, I read the daily stoic yesterday and I said, okay, this is another, I'm going to attempt this again. I'm going to today as of now, which would have been, you know, a little less than 24 hours ago. It was about nine o'clock on uh, uh, yesterday morning. I read this and I said, okay, well, I'm going to attempt to not allow things that happen in my day to day to frustrate me. I'm going to breathe deep. I'm going to do what I got to do. I'm going to say a little prayer. I'm going to do a dance or whatever needs to be done to not be frustrated. <coughs> so it started out all right. It started out all right. I uh, I made it to, you know, mid-morning through my day. I was doing some research on what uh, what products to do some videos on for, for Amazon. And I knew I had to change the toilet yesterday. Not one of my favorite things to do. It's not horrible by any means. I, I think I I um I think I I don't like it just the I don't like the idea of it. I don't <laughs> it's just the having to do it. Uh it's not bad. It's not like throw up disgusting or anything like that. It's the going through the motions and fitting it into what I'm trying to accomplish otherwise. So I thought about it like that. And I was like, yeah, it's not that bad. It's not that bad. I get it done. Uh, and it, it clicked that I could do videos on the Cocoa Core. I needed to get one up yesterday. I had one. Uh, I had a video that it didn't turn out well. I didn't have one prepared for yesterday. So I needed to get one done in the morning. And I'm still behind. I need to get one done for this morning after the show. But anyway, I was like, oh, I can do the Coco Core video. Corey had meetings all day. Um, <laughs> um, uh, Corey, Corey had meetings all day and dodging in and out of the meetings. Like we kind of coordinate me doing um doing inside videos, which I'm having to do a lot of lately uh, because of the weather. But uh, we kind of coordinate that with our schedule. So she's got a lot of meetings. I don't try to fit them in uh, in case she's getting calls and things like that because we can hear each other in the different rooms. And I try to be respectful of her work because her work makes money. Um, anyway, I I decided I was going to do a, a video about the Cocoa Core outside when I was changing the toilet because I had to expand our cocoa core. That's what we use for, um, for medium in the, in the composting toilet. So I'm all set. I, I go out, I start, I start, uh, rehydrating it. I get it all fluffy and I'm getting ready to change the toilet make my video and change the toilet. And the wind just wouldn't stop. Like seriously, the wind yesterday was like 20, 25 mile an hour. And it wasn't gusty. It was just solid. Like, I don't know how it didn't stop blowing constantly. It just it just kept blowing and blowing and blowing. It was cold. Obviously, uh, it's 25 overnight last night. And it, it just, it was a cold wind. It was a stiff wind. I didn't want to have a jacket on in my, in my video. I just wanted a hoodie. Um, it was sunny out. So, man, if... Uh, I just wanted to be able to do my video. I didn't want the noise interference from the wind. And I was like, okay, just going to go with it. I can't control it. I'm just going to go with it. I'm going to make the video. I'm going to do the best I can. I'll wait until the wind dies down. I'm like, okay, I can do this. <sighs> so, so good morning, Backwoods Butcher. Thanks for stopping in. So I go and, um, I make the video. It turns out okay. I had to do a little audio adjusting, this and that. I had to do a little audio adjusting. It was all right. It, it turned out fine. It was um, not as good as I had hoped, but it was okay. Uh, got the video done. Still had to had to change the toilet. So I went out and man, the wind. 
<laughs> the wind was just horrific yesterday. Um, and everywhere I was at was kind of like a wind tunnel. So yesterday when I'm trying to change the toilet, I'm uh, I'm holding a big garbage bag to dump it into. And it's just like, have you ever tried to hold a garbage bag? Like in the fall when you're leak raking leaves um, and you're trying to hold a bag to get them in the bag and the wind's blowing like 20 miles an hour because it's fall. Yeah, that with poop instead of uh, instead of leaves. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that was and I, I rolled through it. I rolled through it. I was so proud of myself. I was like, OK, OK, it is what it is. It's got to be done. It's got to be done. Like people got to poop and people got to have a place to poop. And I would much rather um, <laughs> Canadian farm said somebody needs to call the way ambulance. I'm saying I, I just rolled with it. I just rolled with it. Like I would have been royally pissed off if I hadn't have been focusing on not being pissed off and just doing this because there was no reason to be pissed off. It was just the wind and <laughs> dumping poop. Backwoods Butcher says that sounds pretty shitty. Yeah. I mean, no, it's not fine. It's fine. It's fine. Like we use the toilet. I I mean, I suggest anybody use one. It's not gross. Um, I mean, it can be sometimes. Eh, 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 not that bad. It's poop. It is what it is. Um, being on, being on the farm, being on a farm for any length of time, you get over poop real quick. But um, yeah, so I got through that. I got the toilet changed. I got it back in. Um, kind of just rolling with the day. I'm like, this is all right. I'm making it. I'm liking this. I'm enjoying it. Um, and then we got to dog walks. So we do dog walks in the morning and the afternoon. Um, about a half an hour about a half an hour or so each way yesterday afternoon it was uh it was pretty windy and chilly and um norman's feet are still kind of iffy so we were just going to do a halfway walk which we go halfway and then we come back just to save on his feet and this is usually this is where um <laughs> that's right kyle does have a nine foot pile of poop in his nine foot tall pile of poop in his yard right now um this is the part of my day that it usually starts going south as far as brian being frustrated and his uh, blood pressure going up is the dog walks um like i was mentioning before with the dogs and and some of their uh idiosyncrasies is um they're very stubborn. They kind of do what they want. Corey has her too. So Corey walks Walter and Clyde. She has them pretty good, like 99% good. They walk very well with her. She controls them very well. They behave pretty well. Uh, mine that I walk, Norman, he is something else. Now, I try to be... I try to give him a little grace because he's got some stuff going on with his paws. And I try to determine whether he is playing that up, whether he is, um, whether he is uh, doing the old feel bad for me, let me do what I want because my paws hurt or if his paws actually really, really hurt or a combination of both. So I try to give him a little grace, but this dog will, randomly stop and walk in front of you stop and walk behind you try to get on the other side of the road um and like trip you and 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 this and that and and so that's one thing that really that irritates me he just won't walk with you he he decides when he wants to cross the road hey good morning jim how we doing <laughs> good morning jim um and good morning jim over on noster thanks for checking in over there too uh, so that's one thing that gets me is, is his, um, his obsessive nature of, of kind of just going where he wants. Uh, another thing he does is he eats grass and we're trying to figure out if he's, if it's because he has some pain going on or if he's got an upset stomach or he just likes grass, but he eats grass like a cow. So when you walk, he'll just like stop and dive and put his head down. Um, he'll put his head down and start uh start mowing on grass and then take a big old mouthful and and keep walking so 
that's another thing. And then their slobber is, it's just, it's infuriating to me. So yesterday the walk starts and you know, it's the normal Norman, Norman has to go pee where he wants to go pee. He walks, um, <laughs> Chris Dixon says dog wants aren't measured aren't about distance. They're measured in sniffs and moments. Yeah, we don't do do for distance either. We got big dogs. <laughs> we we don't go very far. Uh, I think a mile total round trip, just under a mile if they go the long way, the far the longest way. Clyde would love to go longer. Good morning, Chris Dixon. By the way, um, Clyde would love to go longer every day, but uh, the big boys they don't care. They don't they don't want to go any further. So we start to walk off. Um, I'm I'm really focused on just going with it, just rolling with it, being uh, not frustrated. And Norman, yesterday for some reason had an upset stomach. These dogs also one thing that they do that uh, you would never know as a dog owner is a normal thing. Um, and I, I really think it is a normal thing after looking into it is they they have a very sensitive stomach and they throw up a lot. Like they throw up just randomly a lot, like once a day, twice a day. Um, Norman must have had an upset stomach. He starts chewing grass. He he does his normal. I have to go different than the other dogs to go pee in my special spot by the flowers, which I get. I get. He likes to go to go uh, pee next to these wildflowers that are on the side of the road. He likes to stand next to them or in them and and pee. We let him do that. Then he comes and joins the other ones and we walk the rest of the way. <coughs> and so we, we, um, Jim says dogs sound like so much fun. My dogs sound like so much fun. <laughs> and so we're going along the walk and, and he starts drooling and starts chewing on grass. And I'm like, oh, he's got to throw up. He proceeds to shake his head three times in a row, like within a couple minutes shake his head and 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 completely cover me with slobber coming from his his jowls because he's 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 getting he's got an upset stomach and his mouth is watering he's getting ready to uh to throw up and so he's trying to shake that slobber off but he would slow down so he was right in line with me and it's just like covering my jacket my pants three in a row Three in a row. I just kept breathing. I kept saying, he's got to throw up. He can't help it. He doesn't want that. I wouldn't want that hanging off my chin. He's got to shake it off. So I just rolled with it. I just rolled with it. We continue to walk a little bit. Norman uh, Norman, Norman hits me three times with the, with the slobber. And um, then he throws up. Then he throws up. And he's good. I'm like, okay, he's good. He's good. He throws up. We continue to go on the walk. He does his business. And and then he just decided that he was going to act like the like he knew nothing about uh about how we were supposed to walk, about where we were supposed to walk. And he was just pushing my buttons. He really, I believe he was just pushing my buttons. I think he was looking at me waiting for a reaction. I think he was like that teenage kid or that seven-year-old that was just like poking, poking. I want, I want you to blow up. I want you to blow up. And so we walk him back. I made it through the walk. I told Corey, I said, Corey, I hadn't talked to Corey about my, uh, my new attitude towards life yet. I was seeing how it goes before I committed to anything. And when I made it through the slobber uh, bath, I said, Hey, you know, I think she noticed that I didn't react at all or just kind of laughed it off. And I said, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to just go with it. I'm trying to be more like you and just go with it and, um, and let it ride. And, and it is what it is. So I made it through the walk. We made it back. And I'm like, I sit down in the chair and I'm like, huh, I made it. It won't have to be. I won't have to worry about this for uh, for a li little while at least. And so we come back, and our routine when we come back is both dogs, all three dogs, really drink um, drink a ton of water, drink a ton of water. 
And I'm sitting in my chair, just kind of breathing, kind of, kind of calming down and, you know, getting rid of all of that uh, stuff that I didn't let explode, you know, because if you just hold it in, that's the problem. If you just hold it in, you're going to blow up. Backwoods Butcher says anger is one of the hardest things to overcome. And I don't know if it's anger. Like, I'm not mad at him for doing it. Like, I, I get the whole concept that that it is. It just is what it is. Um, it just in the moment, it, it becomes overwhelming. Because it's a lot, guys. It, it really is. Um, I would love for people to come and experience this <laughs> with these three. Um, so we get home and I made it through it. I'm sitting here and I'm, I'm like, okay, I did it. I did it. I'm having a little water here. Dogs are drinking. And literally Walter walks over. Walks over in front of the table where I'm at. And threw up like a quarter gallon of water. And like he knows. He knows when he drinks too much. Like when he drinks the whole bowl of water we put down for him. He throws it back up. Like, he knows this. I think. I, I have to believe he does. It's because sometimes he doesn't. Sometimes he moderates himself and doesn't throw up. <laughs> and so, <laughs> he walks over by the table and just lets it rip. Like, probably a quarter gallon of water. Just hits the floor. Blah. And I just looked out on it. And I look over at Corey and I'm like, she's running to grab paper towels because our tailor is, uh, is it's tipped just a little bit and it's rolling across the floor to go under the slide. And I'm just sitting in the chair looking at it. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to react. I'm not going to react. I'm not going to react. And so I just sat there. I made it through. I made it through. <laughs> Canadian Farm says, is Walter just helping you test the resolve of your new mindset? And that's what I felt. That's what I felt like is they were, uh, they were going, they were just, they were just doing it on purpose. Like they heard me. So Walter pukes. Corey cleans it up. I'm still doing all right. I haven't lost my shit yet. And um, Corey's changing the Berkey filter because you guys know, like we have a two and a half gallon Berkey filter that runs constantly in our house. Like a normal couple, like if Corey and I were ourselves, like just by ourselves here, we would fill it like once, maybe twice a day. We are constantly filling this and, and, uh, and, and emptying it. <coughs> And, um, so <laughs> she goes to fill the Berkey, boom, water's empty. If you guys don't know, we fill and empty our tank. Um, we don't hook up to pressurized water. Uh, we, we kind of want to keep on the water conservation mindset, um, uh, in case we go somewhere that we're not hooked up. We don't have city water. We just want to keep in that groove. So we fill our, our, uh, our fresh water tank and then we empty it. We fill it, we empty it. Um, uh, and good, good morning, Nicole. How are you? And, uh, and so the water pops and I look up at Corey and I'm like, it is what it is. It is what it is. I'll go fill it. She's like, no, I got it. I was like, nope, nope, no complaints. I'm not going to lose it. I'm just going to roll with it. going to go out and fill it. So I go out and I fill the water. She continues to uh, to start the dishes and, uh, and dinner. And I fill the water and I come back in and I looked at her and I said, I full well expect the propane to run out while you're making dinner. <laughs> I, I, I full well, I full well expect I full well expect you uh, that we will run out of propane. And sure enough, we didn't. We didn't. So I made it through. I made it through um, pretty well. Pretty well. I think I did all right for the first day. Uh, but thanks to the Daily Stoic, I got a, I got a new um, attitude towards life. 
new attitude towards trying to roll with it and not let these guys frustrate me and blow my shit, blow my, uh, blow my top and uh, just understand they are what they are. And my life is what it is. And we'll just roll with it. It's not that bad. So that was day one, guys. Day one was uh, a challenge for sure. Uh, Hunter says, sounds like someone that prayed for patience. <laughs> Dixon says serenity now. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. That's exactly how I felt. <laughs> oh, Jen says we had three cats with us in our motorhome when we take when we take off. Nothing like what Brian is going through with three dogs, but still kind of crazy. You can only imagine. Yeah. And Corey wants to get more. Corey wants more dogs. Like litter. Literally, if I told my wife you can do anything you want, I do. I will not say a word. You do whatever you want. I think she would get more dogs. I, I really do. Native Barb said, "Lord, give me patience and give it to me now." <laughs> oh man! So we had uh, that was the day yesterday. Uh, got done, made it through, made it through, and um, living free in Tennessee. Yeah. Hey, Corey. Nicole says we could start a shelter. She says, yeah, I could. <laughs> uh, we get through the day. We uh, we kind of wrap up. We we kinda, we wanted to watch some Lost. It's Monday, you know. We make it through Monday, and I was so proud of myself for not losing my shit. I uh, just wanted to be done for the night, and so we sat down to watch Lost. Talked uh, talked yesterday about um, talked yesterday about all the prescription drug ads. <laughs> Thanks. Thanks, Canadian Farmstead. Canadian Farmstead says, you already were nice enough to pick up one stray. Don't you think I'm enough? <laughs> uh, so we sat down to watch Lost, and um, I was talking yesterday about all the, the prescription drug commercials. And lo and behold, lo and behold, I think all night, I think we watched two, maybe three episodes before bed, um, like two hours worth, maybe just to, to chill out. And I think we only saw one drug commercial, one prescription drug commercial in the whole thing. It completely changed. I was like, oh, that's weird. Um, Corey noticed it. Um, Living Free says, Tennessee says they've been watching Eureka when we watch something. Yeah, we watch one program. We have like our one thing that we watch and it's lost right now. It was Survivor. Kyle got us to watch Survivor. And then we watched Alone and uh, now we're watching Lost. <laughs> all these things where people are out in, uh, in the uh, all by themselves on a deserted island. <laughs> uh, so... Only one drug commercial. Spoiler alert. Um, Corey noticed it right off the bat. She's like, I'm not seeing any drug commercials. I was like, that's weird. Because it was constant. It was constant until I um until I until I said something. Um, so we were noticing that the second odd thing was back. Remember, I said I changed the toilet yesterday. So I have a bunch of rubber gloves that I may or may not have stocked up on um, in the past. Somewhere where I might have been able to procure boxes of rubber gloves uh, on a daily basis. Not going to say where, but I had a stockpile when we left and I'm getting low. I had two years, two years, um, two years worth of um, rubber gloves. Chris Dixon says my Google phone heard me. Yeah, I know. As soon as this one's dead, I think I'm I'm gotta go to the the degoogled Pixel. But doing YouTube and um, everything on it constantly, it, it's a really big decision to do that. Um, <laughs> so we we uh, <laughs> I'm I'm starting to run low on my rubber glove supply. Which is, is I'm, I'm ahead on rubber gloves. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. 
And so I grabbed some and I, I was talking to Corey. I was like, hey, I'm almost out of rubber gloves. Uh, what am I going to do? I'm going to have to actually go buy some. I said, I, I, man, it's been years. Um, <laughs> I, uh, I, uh, it's been years since I actually had to go buy rubber gloves. I worked at a, I worked at a, a, a tech company or a, as a service tech for so long that they were just around everywhere. And so I'm finally running out. I'm like, oh man, I'm gonna have to, um, I'm gonna have to buy rubber gloves. And Kyle says, uh, any auto parts store, I know where to get them. I'm not, I'm not wondering where to get them. And anyway, the first commercial that came up when we watched Lost last night was for Venom rubber gloves. No shit. The first commercial. I'm like looking at this, going, really, really. You motherfuckers. You motherfuckers. You heard me. You heard me talk about rubber gloves. And the first ad you put up when we when we sit down to watch TV is for rubber gloves. And Hunter says, Oh, those are good gloves. Yes, they are. Uh when uh when this when the safety guy at at my job, when the safety guy at my job would uh be his normal self and forget to order gloves my size. And I would get to go buy my own. You're damn right with the company card. I bought Venoms. They are, they are fantastic. Let me tell you, I will not be buying them for my personal use to uh, to be changing the toilet. <laughs> not, not happening. Not happening. Um, <laughs> Jim says what you need when you need it, whether you want it or not. Yeah, I'm still going to dig through. I'm pretty sure I might have four or five more boxes stashed away in different places in this uh, camper in the truck. So I'm definitely going to be looking looking before I go and buy Venoms. Uh, but that was kind of disturbing that, uh, that the first commercial was something that I had talked about. And it was probably, I would say probably six hours prior that I was talking about it, maybe five hours prior. And uh, boom, it popped up. I was like, all right. All right, I got gotcha. you. I hear you. I hear you hear me. Do you hear me hearing you? I hear you. I hear you. So that was uh that was a little disturbing. Um the other commercials instead of the drug commercials we were getting uh smart water, Gatorade water. What is the deal with water now? I remember living through the bottled water revolution. Chris Dixon says, it's funny how you know it's happening, but it still surprises you. I don't know if surprise was the, the word I would have used uh, for the reaction. I, I think it was more frustration. <laughs> Nicole, I like it. Says we should all talk about the same thing weekly, something crazy just to mess with them. Well, yeah, I don't know. It, it worries me. It worries me that they were showing me all these like ulcerative colitis drugs and all this other, um, all this other weird shit, all the time. And it made me actually have a dream last night. I think I uh, I woke up from this like very vivid dream that I had alopecia. I don't think I could get it. Like, isn't that where where you turn from dark to light? I don't think. Um, I don't think I can, I don't think I can get alopecia. I don't think that's something, maybe I can. Do you, I guess I could lose more pigment in my skin, <clears throat> but I had alopecia and I was, I was watching Lost to figure out what the name of the alopecia drug is that they keep showing me on, on Lost. <laughs> And I kept watching and watching and watching and it wouldn't show me the commercial. And it was like, if you've seen Lost, you know, hitting the button every time. It was like that. Like I had to watch another episode to see the alopecia drug. And as I was watching, um, as I was watching the, 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 the thing, the white spot spreading, I was just waiting for the, waiting for the commercial to come on. Backwoods Butcher says Brian wakes up with alopecia and says, Oh my god, I'm white. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I don't I was like, and I watched and I, I was like continually stuck to 
alopecia's loss of hair what is the ah uh, i thought it was the pigment one yeah i got alopecia i lost my hair <laughs> Oh, Jim wants me to say monkeys. We're going to talk about monkeys or something. I don't know. Vitiligo. There we go. Thanks, Hunter. Thanks, Hunter. Vitiligo. Alopecia. Uh, vitiligo. I don't have either. Um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Chris Dixon, you have the pigment one? Oh, so you can get it. It It, it isn't just uh, for darker skin people. I mean... You're not you're not like um, glow in the dark white by any means, but it's just loss of pigment, probably less noticeable with less pigment. Yeah, well, I had a dream that I had it and I couldn't find out what drug I needed because Amazon wouldn't show me the drug I needed. So I just kept watching, just kept watching. But it did worry me. It made me worry. Um, am I worried about sickle cell? It's less noticeable. I got called a racist because I asked uh, someone if they had sickle cell. Like legitimately, he was describing, it was a black man, an older black man that I worked with at a job. And we were we were having a conversation that some other people were listening to. And he was describing the exact, uh, <laughs> Chris Dixon says it's less noticeable in winter. <laughs> I asked him, he's like, oh, I'm really lethargic. And like, he was going down all the symptoms of, of anemia. And I asked him, since it's a trait, it is like, like, why is that an unreasonable question? And somebody lost their shit and went to HR and called me a racist. I'm like, how am I a racist for asking someone that could possibly have a disease if they had a disease? I didn't understand. That was that was one of my tipping points where I lost my shit. <laughs> like, like I, it wasn't like I, uh, I I I didn't ask my I didn't ask someone that couldn't possibly have it as a as a, a racial slur. Like I actually was seriously concerned about the guy and asked if. He, he had a disease that he could have possibly had. I don't know. Whatever. Whatever. Um, <laughs> but anyway, after my dream, um, I think I didn't. I, I don't think there were any uh, drug commercials. I think I was having HIPAA violation, but not racist. <laughs> I was an AMPA violation to ask someone. He wasn't my, I was just a coworker. It's not like I was his, his, uh, sup, his, uh, um, uh, superior or whatever. God, I wasn't his supremacist. <laughs> oh, man. Right. Nicole says not even HIPAA violation, even not medical staff. I was just like, I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right. Pickle P says, whoa, you forgot you're not supposed to think or solve problems. Right? Like the dude didn't even care. It was somebody else that was butthurt about it that overheard us talking about it and ran to HR and they called me in. They're like, you can't ask a black man if he has sickle cell anemia. And I'm like, can I ask Chris, Chris Dixon if he has vitiligo? <laughs> like, come on, give me a break. Give me a break. I didn't, I didn't ask him like some blown out of proportion question. It was, it was sad. It was sad. Um, but anyway, the, the commercials we saw the most last night on the freebie, which I don't know why I pay for prime anymore. My, my deliveries take five days. I don't get free uh, movies and worth a shit. Uh, anything that I, I like and enjoy, I usually buy. Um, <laughs> hey, Chris Dixon, are you pregnant? <laughs> like, what? <laughs> um, 
but we're watching the freebie and we moved away from from the drug commercials last night and it was all water 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 smart water gatorade water and every water has something added to it um every water has um some benefit and i don't understand i think we're getting closer and closer and closer to brondo uh we're getting closer and closer and closer to water just being in the toilet because i'm pretty sure the gatorade water commercial was all about the electrolytes in the water and Corey looked at me and she goes like brondo <laughs> so i think it's coming it's coming faster than we want it's coming so much faster than we want living free tennessee says my youtube ad revenue about pays for the youtube subscription i i hear you on that i hear you on that i got a brand new water bottle yesterday in the mail um to review as a as a product and i'm excited about it that might be why they were trying to show me water that might be why they were trying to show me water because I, when i got home i was talking to Corey about the water bottle uh, that I got and how much I like it came with three different types of lids. It came with, uh, yeah, it's really cool bottle. Uh, I'm excited to give it a try, but, um, that's why they were probably showing me water. You don't need water. You need Gatorade water in a bottle with electrolytes or smart water. And they're like, you know, what's smart adding water to your beauty routine. What? How about we just drink water because it's good for us. We don't add it to our beauty routine. I don't know about that. I don't know. Uh, so that was the majority of the commercials were water. <laughs> Is it instantly cool? <laughs> I don't know. Oh, the Stanley. <laughs> the Stanley thing irritates the living crap out of me because I have a Stanley affiliate um, long before the Stanley mugs blew up. And it just sat there, and I was like, "Nah." It was more about their um, more about their camping supplies than their uh, than their water mug. And I didn't think about it. I didn't think about it. Corey told me a while back. She's like, "Yeah, I think those Stanley mugs are a thing. I keep seeing them on my TikTok and this and that." And I'm like, "Nah, whatever, whatever." And uh, then within a, a month or so, like people were killing each other to get them and paying absorbent amounts for them. And I was like, "Huh, missed that boat." Miss that boat. <laughs> it is more than Stanley cool. It is not obnoxiously big. And um, yeah, I like it. I like it. I can't wait to give it a try. Um, Chris Dixon says maybe Walter knew I was dehydrated that when he puked a quarter gallon of water on the floor, he was just trying to help me out. Okay, we'll go with that. We'll go with that too. Uh, what's going on? Oh my God. <laughs> the, the story of Stanley revamp is nuts. Yeah. They, they kind of totally, uh, they totally flipped, um, flipped demographics. Didn't they from like ornery old blue collar guy that uh, is miserable crabbing his lunchbox and his thermos going to work at the factory to uh to girls driving around in their huge uh crystal clean SUVs that have never seen the 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 dirt side of the pavement um yeah <laughs> oh boy oh boy 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 um <laughs> uh, the other thing that we did but Corey and i after we saw after we saw the the rubber glove commercial we played with the we played with the amazon a little bit because we sat there and i yelled into my phone twice i said we want to see puppies and dogs we want to see puppies and dog commercials and I don't know if it was the next commercial break or the one after Up Pops, a movie for about dogs. 
it was an Amazon, uh, a Amazon original about several dogs. There were dogs all over the screen. And Corey looks over at me with the biggest smile on her face. And she says, tell them we need to win money. <laughs> I don't think that works that way, but it is what it is. It is what it is. Pip says soccer moms and their super Jeeps. Yep. 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 Um, <laughs> oh so that was fun we played with uh we played with them a little bit um let me see what else is on my notes here i don't know if i really want to get into that today tomorrow i'm going to be talking about um i'm going to be talking about minneapolis and their their incessant need to control everything uh especially when it comes to wages and how it's going to kick them right in the square in the butthole uh, so that'll be, I'm going to be talking about that tomorrow. Uh, right here at the end, I want to let you know that uh, the link to sign up for, oh, I lost it on my clipboard. Hold on one second, guys. Uh, still got the, the webinar going on for SRF um, Legends, where we're going over previous presentations that uh, that we've had there's a uh, live q and a's there's uh, interactive um discussions and the like i uh i have not tuned in been able to tune into one yet but from everything i can see in the little bit of a replay i watched uh it, it's it's looking like it's going good uh nicole if you're still around you can uh drop in the comments and and verify that but I know a couple other people in the comments have uh, checked them out and said they were, they were definitely worth it. So you can sign up for free at the link in the video description or in the, the comments there and uh, check it out. Check it out. I know Toolman Tim was the other night uh, on Sunday night. I'm not sure who was last night. I was too busy trying to. Uh... Oh, and Nicole took off already. <laughs> Look at that. While I was copying the link. <laughs> Everybody hit that like while you're thinking about it. Yes. Um, other than that, guys, I don't have a whole lot today. I, uh, I'm just going to roll through it. I'm going to try to make it day two of my uh, my new philosophy on just letting things go and uh, not letting not letting things frustrate me because they're not allowed to. Uh, they do not have power over me. I have power over me, and they're not going to uh, they're not going to not going to affect that. Um, Pip says, I've been staying up to watch the SRF webinar. Good stuff. Yesterday was soil building. Can't beat that. Can't beat that. It uh, looks like a uh, tool man, Tim, I saw this morning. He took off for his big uh, eight week road trip. I think he's eight weeks this, this year, uh, this spring. And um, yeah, I'm excited to see him. He's, uh, he's headed down here in a little bit. Uh, I might try to sneak out to delinquents gully today or tomorrow. And then Corey and I'll hit it up again this weekend. And, um, yeah, that's going to be good. It's going to be good. We got to make a lot of progress. We got a shitload of trails cut and, uh, and getting, getting campsites ready for the season. Slow going, slow going, but it's, uh, it's progressing every time we go out. So there, that is uh, a positive for sure. Uh, other than that, um, Noster, I'm hoping to get the, the mobile version Android and Apple it kind of fell off my my to-do list at some point and uh, I'm trying to get the Android and Apple screenshots on how to quickly sign up for Noster using um, using Primal how to uh, initialize a wallet if you want to it's very minimal KYC but it is just a little bit you got to do uh, you got to do a verification email and uh, the info has to kind of set up uh, or line up uh, appropriately. So hopefully I can knock that out today. It's a matter of getting it recorded on my phone, getting it recorded on Corey's phone, and then putting it all together and doing voiceover. So it's a little bit more, uh, it's a little trickier than it sounds. Uh, it just, it, it's, it's a lot of not, it's not hard to explain. It's hard to put together. Uh, Backwood says, so excited for SRF this fall. Yeah, you going to come? Are you going to come to SRF this fall, Kyle? Because that would be cool. Enjoy it. And we enjoy it. Um, if anybody is uh, if anybody's looking for a vendor spot, I, I may have a little bit of extra room at our table <coughs> in uh, here in April. 
uh we have um we have a we have a vendor tent and uh yeah i think we have a spot or a spot or possibly two depending on what you have and how much there is but um yeah hit me up info at the lots project.com or you can shoot me a message on message on telegram or get a hold of me any way you can carrier pigeon or the such so let me know if you're heading to SRF and you got some some goods you'd like to hang out and uh, and be part of the community tent because obviously if you're listening to this or watching this you are part of the community. So with that, guys, um, and Kyle says he's actually going to have merch this year. Whoop 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 whoop. I got a bunch of stuff going. I got to get them up on Etsy, but uh, I don't have many. I don't have many nunchucks, but we have a bunch of keychains, uh, survival bracelets, and all sorts of fun stuff to have for sale there. And uh, just more interacting with people, sharing the tent with Tim, Toolman Tim, and myself, and whoever else we get to roll in with us. So other than that, guys, I think I'm going to wrap up here, get going, try to warm up. It's a little chilly here. I got to go stand next to the wood stove for a little bit since I'm way on the other side of the camper from it. And it hasn't quite warmed up here in my room. Other, oh, oh man. It's been a day and I, uh, I'm excited to roll through and, uh, and try to make it another day without blowing my shit. So, all right, guys hit that like, um, uh, if you pre I appreciate y'all listen, if you enjoyed the show, it's always free to hit the like share and subscribe to return value for value. Please consider joining one of the YouTube membership tiers or listening on any value for value platform like Podverse or fountain.fm can also share any of the videos there on the YouTube channel, share the channel. Um, and, uh, yeah, any, any shares, likes, comments anywhere always help. I appreciate all of you that, ah, thanks pickle Pete. See a snaggle tooth. Yeah. That big old, hmm, there you go. There you go. Big old, big old gap. Um, <laughs> hit the like, hit the share, hit the comment, all of that. Also visit the lots to find for more information or to find all my links and discount codes, partner companies and all the such. It's Tuesday. It's Tuesday. Enjoy your day and try to uh, try to not let anything frustrate you because you control it. No one else does. No one else can overwhelm you or frustrate you. Just roll with it and uh, make it a great Tuesday and we'll catch up with you tomorrow. I'm